Hi, I'm Tim from EcoQ, and hopefully your oven's all put together now and ready to go. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, do a break-in burn. Now, what you need to do before you do the break-in burn on the oven is remove everything inside. Remove all the pans, remove all of the bricks, remove the pizza stone. And at this point, you shouldn't have uh, assembled the pizza stone on the top of the oven. You'll do that after we do the break-in burn. Um, we've got everything emptied out, and we're ready to go. Uh, I want to take a quick moment and just uh, go over some different tips on woods so that you know what to use for, for cooking woods. Generally any wood that has a fruit or a nut is perfect for cooking. So hickory, maple, sugar maple, uh, apple, peach, oak, they're all great cooking woods. Uh, mesquite is a good one too. It won't be as high a heat but it's great for brisket and certain types of beef. Uh, so, depending on what you're cooking and, and what you want to make, um, you'll determine what woods are the, are the right ones to use for, for the job. Uh, but you definitely want to have a high heat wood to use, so oak or maple or hickory, when you do your break and burn, because you want to get the oven up to over 500 degrees. Uh, and you also want to use a high heat wood when you're using the stones and cooking on the stones, especially for pizza. So let's just take a quick look at some of the woods that we have uh, available. Uh, there are some larger chunk woods and also smaller chunk woods. They're really great. Lump charcoal is okay too, but never use charcoal briquettes. You do not want to use charcoal briquettes in this oven. So we'll take a look and uh, look at some fire starters as well. We've got a few things out here ready to go. We've got uh, a particular type of fire starter that we like to use called lightning nuggets. You can also use a charcoal chimney and start a chimney full of lump charcoal. We'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Uh, that's another great way to start a fire in here. Um, we've got some larger chunks ready. We've got some smaller chunks. This happens to be uh, some New England hardwood, uh, some maples and uh, sugar maple and sweet birch, and uh, some chunks mixed in there. That's great wood for high heat, really good. And then we've uh, got our pans all set aside on the table and uh, away from the oven, and we're ready to build our first fire. Really just putting a blend of different hardwoods in here, it doesn't really matter that much when you do the break-in burn what you use for wood. You just want a nice hot fire so that this thing gets up to temperature and burns off some of the residue that's on it and uh, cleans out some of the moisture that's inside. One other thing you want to make sure you do during the break and burn is open your little vent in the back. Just open it wide open and that way any of the uh, any of the smoke or fumes that accumulate inside the pizza oven will just vent right out that back vent hole. The fire that you build in the airtight firebox travels along the top of the firebox chamber, heating up the fire brick directly above. It goes up the sides of the brick oven located directly above it and then enters the smoking oven and rises up and out the chimney. Airflow is controlled on the front vent knobs of the firebox chamber and also by adjusting the flue damper in the chimney. Now that you get your fire started to the point where it's going to catch pretty good, we want to open all of the vents in the front, three quarters of an inch to an inch is plenty. Any further than that, it's really not going to make a big difference. So three quarters of an inch to an inch, so these are all opened up now. And then we'll just push it in. We've got our chimney completely open up above. And we'll just let that start to catch.
once the unit gets up and going, you want to make sure you got some stove gloves on. Uh, the nice thing about these is if you need to manipulate the wood, you can. They're available uh, for sale uh, from a variety of people online as well, but I highly recommend that you always use a pair of good leather stove gloves when you're uh, uh, running the unit. One of the reasons why we put the spring handles on the front was to uh, have a stay cool handle, but it's again, it's still a good idea to have, uh, have the gloves on. Once we get the fire going pretty good in the chamber, you just want to want to spread that out a little bit because you want that fire to spread evenly across the whole bottom of the oven. And we're going to add some more wood. One really useful tool on this is a laser thermometer. Uh, we sell it in a couple of the assortments. This is an infrared laser thermometer. So as we pull open the door and we shoot a temperature on the bottom of the oven, we can show exactly what the temperature is instantly. So it's showing 725, 730, 760, that's plenty of heat. So at this point, 810 on that side, you do not want this to get any hotter than that. Now, if there were bricks in there, the bricks would be absorbing some of that heat, which is fine. And so you'd go by the brick temperature and you really don't, with the bricks in there, you don't want it to get up above 650 degrees, 700 degrees max, but six, 600 degrees is more than enough temperature in there for cooking. So my recommendation is to go ahead at this point and pull the firebox out and just let that start to cool down. And then your break in burn has been completed. One of the other little things you're going to need to do if you bought uh, one of the units that has the cast iron grill grate is you're going to want to season this. So we've scrubbed this with hot soapy water and cleaned it off and we're going to break it in um, as long as we've got some coals that are dying down in the oven right now and uh, we're going to put some high heat oil on it. This is, this is avocado oil which works really good. Peanut oil is another good one. We're just going to take a brush. We're just going to brush some oil all over this and uh, that will allow this to uh, bake off uh, in, the, in the oven and use some of those dying coals to kind of give it uh, a little bit of heat. And, and what that does is the, the cast iron expands and uh, sucks in the oil and then contracts again. So this is definitely something that you want to do is pre-season that grill grate. And, and uh, once you've done this, you don't want soap, and soap to ever touch this again. You can scrub this with hot water and then re-season it, uh, but you treat this just like you would any good cast iron pan. So once we've got the oil on there, nice coat of oil on there, you take the grill lifter and you lift this up, put your gloves on, this up by the handle, bring it over here, drop it right on top of that surface. You can see you got a nice bed of white coals in there, so just push it in and let it season it. From time to time, one of the other things you're going to need to do is lift the grill grate up and manipulate your fire and organize the coals just the way you want them. Uh, when you get ready to cook. So what you do on that case is use your lifter, use your glove, and then there's a couple of there's a couple of pieces of wire there. Just lean that against there and then you can use your coal raking tool and just go ahead and organize your fire any way you want. This is in pretty good shape. It's a nice even bed of coals, but if you had to move some coals to the back, from the back to the front, you could use that for this. And then once your fire's organized, just take your grill grate and lift it back into place. And that's the last step that you need to do before you're ready to cook. Once your uh, surface is preheated, and it's also a good idea to use your laser uh, infrared uh, monitor 
to uh, give you a temperature on what that surface is before you cook. The cooking surface is now more than hot enough to uh, grill about anything you want. You can put your laser thermometer on there and you can see we're looking at about a, a 700 degree surface. Right up there near the back it's running about 560, 570. So uh, you got plenty of heat going on and uh, you can use some experimentation. That's the other reason why it's important to note that you do not need a lot of coals in here to do a nice job of cooking. Uh, you can move these coals around, you can manipulate them. If you think the grill grate surface is too hot, then fine, pull some of the coals back and uh, use a lower fire underneath there. Uh, so uh, again, this is a nice uh, reason to have a, one of the laser thermometers because it'll help you monitor that temperature on there real nice. But this is all pre-seasoned and ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to do uh, now that the oven has cooled down is load all the bricks in and also install the, uh, the pizza oven stone on the top of the oven. Okay, so we've completed assembly of the stone up top and now you're ready to remove the jack. After you've completed the break-in burn and your oven is completely cooled down and you're starting to clean up uh, the residue inside, you're going to have to clean your glass again and you want to use a second coat of this Rutland glass cleaner that we provided with the unit. Now this will uh, again put a nice silicone coat on the ceramic uh, material in there and uh, make it a little bit easier to clean next time. But uh, you want to use this glass cleaner on a pretty regular basis, especially in the smoker oven. Uh, but hopefully uh, putting a, a, a round of this on at the very beginning before you did your break and burn will help uh, in the cleanup process right from the very beginning. Thank you for watching this video on Generation 2 of the EcoQ wood-fired oven and smoker. It's just one of a growing series of videos on our Generation 2 ovens. You'll find all of our videos on the EcoQ YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash EcoQ. We hope all these videos will help you enjoy using your new oven.